Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we're gonna take a look at Amazon Cognito, which is a way that you can set up a login screen for your app. And this, uh, they've changed this UI before, uh, but basically there's two options, user pools, identity pools. User pools is when you want to uh, provide login to your app. Identity pools is when you want to grant access to other AWS services via this uh, directory, uh, like directory service. Uh, but we'll go ahead and create ourselves a new user pool. Normally I'd like to do this programmatically, but this one's really tricky to set up in CloudFormation. We're keeping it really simple here. Uh, you can see we have uh, two options. We're gonna stick with Cognito user pools here. And our, we have our sign in options. So they've changed this UI again on me, which is totally fine, but uh, choose the attributes in the user pool that, you, uh, that are used to sign in with. And so we want to allow them to sign in with email. So we'll go next. Uh, they have some really good defaults. This is about the um, password defaults. I'm gonna go change this because I just want my life to be really easy. And this is just a simple example. So we'll just say characters have to be six. Uh, temporary password set by administrator expires in one day. So that's fine. We'll go down below. Uh, we have multi-factor authentication. Um, I feel like this costs money. So I'm gonna say no MFA for now. User account recovery, enable self-service recovery. That sounds fine to me. That gives us a forgot a password uh, screen there. We'll allow that via only email. Just understand if you do SMS, it's gonna cost you money. Uh, we have the self-service signup. So display a signup link on the, on the sign-in page in the hosted UI. So I think this is for automatically setting up the hosted UI. So um, AWS allows you to either integrate Cognito into your code or have um, a hosted UI page, like a, a page set up for them. Theirs is not very good, but it does make it very easy to demonstrate uh, this example here. We'll go down below to attribute verification user account configuration. So allow Cognito to automatically send messages to verify and confirm. Uh, yeah, that sounds fine to me. Send email message. So this is for comp email confirmation. Verify attribute changes, we'll leave those alone. Required attributes, here we might wanna have something additional like preferred username. So that way we're saying, hey, what's your email? What's your username? Uh, we can also add custom attributes. We'll go ahead and hit next. And by the way, I should point out that um, I think this, once you create the pool, these can't be changed later. So you have to be very particular in what you want to choose here. Uh, we have two options for email. You can set up with SCS, which um, is better for production, but for our simplicity, we'll we'll send with Cognito because they'll have everything for us. So we have our from email, which is fine. If you set an invalid reply to, I wonder if we have to fill that in. It says it's optional, so we'll skip it. And we'll just call this uh, my user pool. And so we're gonna add the hosted UI to save us some time here today. I'm just going to toggle this, see what we have here. Uh, configure domain, so basically you get to choose uh, a domain. You could add a custom domain, but for this, I'm just gonna say uh, my cool uh, user group. If that doesn't work, you'll have to uh, pick something that works for you. We have our client type. Um, app clients are single app platforms. Uh, I'm trying to remember what this is. Let me just read this quickly to get my bearings here. All right, so this is for configuring the uh, initial app and uh, technically this is a public application, so it will be public. I'll just say my client app here to keep it simple because you create basically, once you create a user pool, you create a user pool client and that's what we're doing here. Uh, I mean, we probably would want to have a secret, but I'm not gonna generate one right now. Then we'll need a callback here. I'm just gonna put anything here like adabus.amazon.com because we're not really making a real callback here. And we do have some settings here and it is setting up our auth auth um, auth authentication flows. Um, they definitely changed the UI here. So normally I choose the one for, whoa, this is confusing. Well, we'll stick with what they have here. <laughs> it used to be really, really simple, but uh, they've uh, made it a little bit harder to read here, but I think this is fine. Allow admin user password auth, allow custom auth, allow user password auth, secure remote password. So we'll just leave it alone and hopefully that just works fine. Enable token re uh, re uh, re revocation. So I assume if we want to take our tokens back, prevent user existence errors. I don't know what that is. Um, identity providers, it is Cognito user pools. So I didn't know you could switch out identity. Well, I guess you could add a different identity providers. That makes sense. It's using code grant. I will also put implicit grant in here because often that's what I, I feel that um, I'll end up using. If it's hosted UI, client credential grant type is disabled uh, during, during this. Okay, so that makes sense. So even though we're selecting these, it's gonna get disabled because we're using the hosted UI. Open ID, connect scopes. Mm. 
There's at least one to specify the attributes that client can retrieve for the access token. We're not doing phone numbers here, so we'll just do email. And I think that's everything. We'll go ahead and hit next. That is fine. We'll go ahead and hit create user pool. Again, I would love to do this programmatically, uh, but it just take a lot of time to figure that out. I will at some point uh, add a, a lab for that, but uh, I used to know the old UI really, really well. Like I could just click through it really quickly. Now um, this one is uh, perplexing, but the idea is that we have, well, that's our signing key URL. That's not what we need. I'm looking for the hosted UI. So that's what I'm looking for here. Groups, no. Sign in experience, no. Sign up experience, no. There we go. So if we go here, we should be able to get to an application. Login screen here. Normally that resolves instantaneously. It might be still uh, provisioning, so that might be the reason why. I'm just gonna go to my console here and see what's happening. Mm. Okay. All right, we'll just wait a moment here. All right, so what's interesting is this is blank. And by the way, I've done this before, like all this instructional stuff, but it's bizarre that uh, that doesn't work there. So it's just showing up blank. And so I looked it up and people are saying, and I kind of remember this, that there has to be this pre-printed uh, information to for the login to work. I mean, we could also just type in forward slash login and see what happens, but it wants the client ID um, and what's confusing to me is why, why doesn't the UI, why doesn't it just provide me that full link? Oh, maybe it does over here. Okay, great. So it's just, they, they moved it. Cause I can see when I hover over this, I'm getting extra attributes. There we go. So we'll go ahead and sign up. I'll just say Andrew at exampro.co. And I'm going to put my preferred username is Andrew Brown. I'm gonna make my, my password capital or just testing. There we go. We'll sign up. And so now what it's doing, and just ignore that because I gave it a really weak password. It's sending a confirmation email. So let me just go open up my email. And so I have an email with a verification code. So go ahead and copy this. And we'll paste that in. And so notice it redirected me to adabus.amazon.com because that was our callback URL. So that worked uh, exactly as intended. Um, so we'll go back over to our user pool here. And what I want to do is I wanna see if there's the users there. So if I refresh this, you can see I'm here, I'm confirmed. If I wasn't confirmed, it is possible to, or it has been in the past, be able to confirm that user if you click into it. Sometimes there's actions like confirm this account, or you can reset their password, or you could sign out the user or disable them for uh, later on. But that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Uh, again, in a real example, you probably do a direct integration um, with application code. That is a lot more complex to set up here. So. Not in this video, but maybe in a separate one here, but this was just to get you started, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tear this down. I think probably have to delete the client first. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, deactivate this, delete the group. Be nice if I can just delete this in one go, that'd be nice. And that's all cleaned up. So I will see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.